Hey kids, it's your old pal, Mr. Sketchy. I'm coming to you today from inside of this recycling bin uh, to talk to you about the importance of recycling. Not really. Uh, yeah, I'm hiding in here, actually. There was an incident involving some Girl Scouts and some cookies. Uh, I swear to God, they had my cookies. They look just like my cookies uh, that went missing last week. Um, so I tried to I tried to take my cookies back. They said they were not my cookies. They were not very happy. Uh, I ran, and uh, they gave chase, and I was forced to hide in this recycle bin. So, uh, in order to pass some time until the coast is clear, I'm gonna set up and do a little sketching video. Uh, so please uh, follow along, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get out of this okay. All right, see you later. All right, kids. Today we're gonna be drawing a horse. I'm going to be using a colored pencil and a regular pencil. Uh, the colored pencil I'm going to use to kind of sketch out my sketching lines. And then the regular pencil I'll use for my final lines. So with the colored pencil here, I'm just sketching out the basic forms that make up this horse. And then I'll use uh, my pencil and the forms I've drawn as a guide for drawing in the contour lines. So we're going to start uh, by drawing kind of a bean shape. And this bean shape, or peanut shape maybe, is a little bit uh, thicker in the front. That's the chest of the horse. But we really just want to think about it as being like a, a, a bean. It's sort of a squished cylinder. Uh, so here I'm drawing the center line on the horse's chest. It's a really good idea to establish a center line uh, down the front of the animal, if that's what's showing, or down the back where the spine would be. This can help you line everything else up. So now I'm trying to create the neck. So the neck kind of looks like a cylinder again. Uh, it's squished and well, but it's a little more organic. And it kind of starts thick as it connects to the chest here, um, extending that center line on the neck. And then it gets thin up towards where the head attaches. And the main line kind of flows over like this. And here's the other side of the neck here. So now I'm thinking about this head form. Uh, so the head form is kind of like a, almost like an oval shape. And then it attaches to the front. The front is kind of a plane. Uh, the front is almost triangular shaped. It's a little more complex than that. So I'm kind of looking at it uh, and establishing just the basic shape with my uh, colored pencil here. And then I'll refine this uh, when I move in with my regular pencil. So this is just the sketching lines. Um, you can do the same thing uh, just using a pencil and drawing these lines real lightly and then maybe erasing them as needed. Uh, but for today, we're using the colored pencil to just sort of show and differentiate uh, the sketching lines versus the final lines of the picture. So there's the cheek, kind of comes up that way, connects down at the muzzle. And here are the ears. The ears are kind of almost triangle shaped again, uh, but they kind of curve in. It's almost like a little uh, flame shape, uh, like those uh, those like flame candle light bulbs, kind of like that, like a, or the big Christmas lights. Uh, those old kind. Oh, those are the kind Mr. Sketchy used to have at his house for Christmas. Oh, those were the days. Lots of cocoa, eggnog, which is kind of gross when you think about it. Ah, uh, you know, clove oranges, you know, hanging up your stockings. Ah, uh, so anyway, uh, I got distracted. Uh, so in the legs are uh, kind of cylinders. We're going to do them similar to the way we were drawing uh, humans. And we'll kind of kind of draw in these joints first. So that's where the knee and the ankle of the leg are. And then I'm going to connect them with uh, cylinders. Now these cylinders, just like with a person, they get thicker or thinner uh, during the cylinder. So we want to look at that. But the basic shape is just a cylinder. All right, now we're coming back around up here. And that's pretty good shapes for my horse leg. And now I'm going to attach the hoof. Again, the hoof is really just kind of a short squat cylinder, like almost like a tuna can. Now I'm kind of looking at the angle I want to do this leg at. I'm going to place the knee about here. And extend it outward like this. And uh, I'm going to attach the reference photo that I'm using uh, so you can use it as well. You'll see that my placement on things is not perfect and that's okay with what we're doing. We're really just trying to observe uh, the simple forms 
uh, that make up the horse. So there's our uh, left front leg. All right, now we're moving into this back leg. And uh, this thigh here is going to be sort of a thicker cylinder. And so I'm drawing where the knee is. And then this is going to come up into the body. And be thicker than the front leg here. I'm going to give it a little more junk in the trunk here. Kind of adjust it, make it look like the horse. Kind of show how they attach there along that line. Uh, next is going to come down to the ankle. And then it's got another joint down at the toe. There we go. There's the back left leg. And you can see it's starting to take on the shape of the horse. And even though we're not just drawing outlines, we're drawing uh, more of the form, uh, you can see that we understand it. we're able to read it. And it's starting to look even kind of three-dimensional uh, by paying attention to those forms. This is a really useful way to draw, uh, not only to kind of capture the accurate shapes, but also to help think about the volume of your subject and make it look kind of more three-dimensional because you're thinking about the 3D forms rather than just where the outlines of things are. So same procedure here, kind of mapping out where the joints go and slowly uh, assembling the leg. So it's really just a series of cylinders there. Um, they get kind of thicker and thinner in some areas, but you think about it as being based on a cylindrical shape. I add the tail and back. That's just kind of two curved lines. I'm just trying to draw in where the bulk of the tail is. We'll kind of draw in individual uh, main hairs uh, as we go. Now I'm coming back in with my uh, pencil, my regular pencil, and I'm drawing in the contour lines. So for this one, I'm just using my uh, colored pencil lines as a guide, uh, but I really want to look closely at my subject and try to observe the details of the contour line. Seeing those details is going to make the drawing a lot more interesting and realistic. And if I miss too many of the important details in the contour lines, it's not going to look right when I finish uh, my drawing. So this is going to curve kind of up like that and into the eye here. Okay. We want to be careful with our eye placement, try to keep them aligned with each other, try to get them in the right place. And you can see I kind of uh, make decisions about where to draw contour lines and where not to. You don't have to draw every single contour line that you can. Uh, you can make decisions and choices about which ones you want to focus on, which ones are darker, which ones are lighter, which ones are more um, emphasized. All right, so now we're coming around the back of the neck here and joining into the back. I'm going to add some of those mane hairs. You can draw the mane as like one big block of hair and then have some strands that separate out. That's a really good way to do it. I'm just kind of going in and drawing hair by hair. And maybe not the best way to do it, but we're good for our sketching. Uh, it's a good idea when you do draw hair, when possible, to kind of draw it as one mass instead of trying to draw these individual hairs. It kind of looks stringy. You can see when I do it. Well, you can experiment with it. It's really just like anything else. It's all about getting the highlights and the shadows. But I think these lines kind of look cool. I'm going to bring this down along the line of the chest. I see there's a little kind of fold of skin here where that leg is lifting. It's little details like that that we notice in the contour line that's really going to make the drawing uh, look more interesting and realistic. We're really trying to notice the details. That's what the this step is all about, you know. Taking it beyond a uh, simple horse and really getting it into like a detailed drawing. All right, we're going to look at some of the chest muscles here, try to get some of the curves there. Really a lot of uh, beautiful musculature in the front of the horse there. And I want to throw in, you know, the contour lines like that, that kind of show the folding increasing and really uh, capture the movement and the kinetic energy of our horse friend here.
Again, just looking at little details, also deciding which contour lines to use, which ones to go darker on, all that stuff. Just really trying to be conscientious about what we're doing. Uh, not just doing things to get them done, but really aware of how we're doing them and what we're doing and trying to observe uh, more and more minute details of our actions. As the actions of drawing become more comfortable to you, uh, you have more ability to pay attention to what you're doing and really think about you know, more and more uh, nuanced things. I'm adjusting a little bit where the foot is here. I didn't like the placement before, so I'm making the leg a little bit longer. Bring it down on the back leg. The back leg here I'm going to put in shadow, so I don't really need to worry as much about getting the details of it. We, since it's in the dark, we don't see the details as much. All right, so now I'm gonna shade the horse a little bit. Oh wait, why do you need to add the tail, eh? So again, I'm gonna use the uh, sort of basic shape of the tail I drew earlier as a guide, and then kind of add hair along the tail there to establish some texture. Lots of beautiful flowing tail hair on this horse, this magnificent horse. All right, now I'm shading. So we're going to have shadow on the underside of the horse because it's outside in the sun where horses belong, not working in office desk jobs, you know. And horses are a lot like people. I kind of feel the same way as this horse, you know. I like being outside. I don't want to be cooped up, you know. I want to be free, Mr. Sketchy wants to be free, free to roam, and free to uh, not be bound down with the home. I'm a wild horse at heart. This animal's really speaking to me. All right, so uh, we've got the light coming over from the right and up above. So anything that's on like the left side or the lower side of the horse, we're going to add a little shadow to. Kind of also going in and noticing the details that I'm seeing, uh, trying to add in details as needed. Uh, whatever you think is interesting, add it in and see if it makes the uh, drawing a, a better version of what you see. So yeah, this is over on the left, so we've got some shadow here. There's a highlight that's kind of getting some sun, so I'm kind of saving that, pulling that out. We can keep the shading simple on this since, you know, it's just a, a sketch. We would refine it more for the final drawing, but for now this is fine. So a lot of shadow on that left side, as you can see, and on the underside there. And then on each of the forms, we're going to shade under the knee, because it's sticking out a little bit. The left side of that uh, shin, I don't know what you'd call it, foreleg. When we shade, we can kind of think about the texture of the horse. So it's hairy. So if we kind of make strokes that mimic the texture of that hair, that can be a useful way to kind of add details. Shading, shading, shading. Under the knee there. And now we'll shade under here. I'm going to strengthen this contour line a little bit by making it darker. And I'm going to shade the inside of this leg here. Mr. Sketchy's old art teacher used to say to keep the shadow simple, not to worry about a lot of nuance or detail in there. So the shadow areas, you don't have to worry as much about that stuff. You can keep them real simple, and they'll still read uh, pretty well. I'm going to refine this curve a little bit. Now I'm looking at the shape of the shadow coming down here, drawing in that terminator line. I think I drew it a little too dark. I might have to soften it later. And we've got shade coming all the way around here, down under the knee there. I've got a little shadow right here. A little bit right here.
Now I'm going to erase it out a little bit. I'm just going to kind of uh, erase it intermittently, not do a real hard erasure, just kind of a gentle uh, softening. And then I notice this contour a little bit more, so I'm going to add that in. A little more shadow right here on the back of the tail. And play with some of these lay, uh, tail hairs a little bit more. All right, so there's our horse. Isn't it look magnificent? Uh, you can use this same techniques to draw pretty much any animal. You just break them down into their basic forms, kind of construct them either using sketchy lines or a colored pencil. Uh, they used to use uh, blue pencils a lot back in the animation days because the uh, copiers wouldn't pick them up. Yeah, I used to. I used to write cartoons. Uh, I wrote a cartoon about a, a mouse and a cat. Its name was uh. It was called uh, Lom and Jormy. Uh, it was a knockoff of another cartoon. Uh, anyway, I'm probably boring you, so uh, we'll see you next time. That's how you draw a horse. And uh, you can use that same technique to draw all kinds of things. So I hope that you enjoyed the video and it's useful to you. Uh, practice drawing all kinds of other animals this way. And pretty soon you'll be a master just like Mr. Sketchy. Alright, we'll see you next week. Oh, wasn't that great, kids? Um, so don't forget to put your $5 in the old coffee can under the bush. Uh, behind the Applebee's if you enjoyed the video and you did trust me you did um I think it's probably safe now so I'm gonna check if the coast is clear there he is. Oh. 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 don't worry kids Mr. Sketchy's all right I'm not sure I entirely remember how I got out of that particular scrape but I'm fine, don't worry. So anyway, uh, here is the picture of the horse uh, for you to look at. You can pause on this and uh, finish your drawing, and we will see you next time.